was a cold winter in Milwaukee back in 1905. The snow flew, the wind howled, and people huddled in their homes to keep warm. All over the city, basement water pipes were bursting and water meters were freezing and breaking. People needed water, businesses needed water, and the city needed to measure the usage of that water. Every day, more and more faulty meters would spring up, or should we say freeze up. They needed a solution, an invention, to keep the water meters working. That's it. The last one. <laughs> it's such a simple concept. The first meters we built haven't even frozen up yet, and I'd swear it's 10 degrees colder than it was a week ago. I do believe we're going to revolutionize the water metering business. Well, if we're going to revolutionize anything, we'd better have a good name. A good name will help. But the craftsmanship on these meters, why, these meters will sell themselves. I believe we could sell 10,000 of these meters, maybe more. <laughs> and to think, the frost-proof water meter was born right here in the Badger State. And with that, the Badger Meter Manufacturing Company was born. It didn't take long before these two men became four, then six, eight, and ten. And that idea of producing more than 10,000 meters, well, that grew too. By 1918, there were 12 employees. When the company got an order for 200 or 500 meters, everyone pitched in, working all day Saturday and part of Sunday. Wages were only 18 to 23 cents an hour, but even at that, Badger Meter employees would say they lived pretty well. By the time the company was 14 years old, it had outgrown its first building on 3rd Street. So Badger Meter moved a few miles west, purchasing a building on 30th Street that included the company's first foundry. As the company grew during the boom time of the Roaring Twenties, so did its need for talented managers and new capital. Charles W. Wright joined the company and pumped new life into the firm. My father used to walk through the plant, and that's where I got the idea. And then you get to know the employees. You know their birthdays and their children. Unfortunately for Badger Meter and many other companies, the prosperity of the 1920s didn't last. The nation was plunged into the Great Depression. Just when it seemed that the company couldn't survive, Badger was saved by an order for 30,000 water meters for Mexico City. When the company advertised for machinists and assemblers, thousands of people lined up for blocks to apply for 50 jobs. World War II brought the production of water meters nearly to a halt, as Badger's people and facilities were used to produce millions of bomb fuses for the war. The housing boom that followed World War II brought good times to Badger Meter. It was then that Charles Wright's two sons, James and William, came to work for the company. Badger grew quickly and needed to expand. The rail railroad yards were to the north of us, and there was a tavern and a street to the south. So all we could do is go up, and that's why we decided, let's find some land. The company bought a manufacturing plant and 21 acres of land in Brown Deer. In 1952, Jim Wright became president and began modernizing the company's operations. In 1953, the company built a new foundry in Fall River, Wisconsin, run by William Wright. Fall River was later spun off, becoming Badger Meter's first alliance partner. The strong relationship between the two companies continues today. Badger also expanded outside of its Milwaukee base with a wholly owned subsidiary in Mexico City that produced water meters for the Mexican market. The 60s was a period of fresh ideas and new products, like the Easy Read, 
The Easy Read had a magnetic drive rather than mechanical and a sealed register with the largest and clearest reading in the industry. Accuracy went way up and the Easy Read put Badger Meter on the map. Building on this success, Badger Meter introduced the Readomatic in 1963. With the outdoor register, meter men no longer have to enter homes to read water meters. They can do a faster, more efficient job, and at the same time avoid any inconvenience to their customers. As Badger continued to grow, the company expanded its Tulsa, Oklahoma operation with the purchase of the Research Control Valve product line. In Brown Deer, a new addition and the distinctive pond and fountain were added. The 70s brought more changes to Badger Meter. The company took metering another step forward with the introduction of the Recordall water meter, named for its high accuracy in recording all water at all flow rates, including very low flow. Computer processing and increased automation helped to fuel the company's growth. The company continued to expand internationally. Badger Meter Europe, located in Stuttgart, Germany, was formed. Badger Meter established a plant in Rio Rico, Arizona, and one in Nogales, Mexico, to mold and assemble meters and registers. Later, in the 1990s, sales offices were added in Mexico City, in Bratislava, Slovakia, and in Singapore. The 80s were a time of significant change throughout the world. At Badger Meter, Jim Wright began sharing the reins with the man who would lead the company into the next millennium, James L. Forbes. Jim Forbes became the fifth president of Badger Meter in 1982. He led the management team in some serious soul searching and the creation of a new mission statement. Well, one of the biggest areas that we decided to concentrate on was technology. And that was technology throughout the entire business. Uh, the product, the manufacturing process, uh, systems for the employees. Uh, the biggest change in the utility um, side of the business was automatic meter reading, where you could eliminate the meter reader and you could provide the, uh, the customer, the utility, with a great deal of information uh, to manage their business. In 1992, Badger was the first in the market with a radio frequency AMR system named Trace. At the same time, the company was also expanding its industrial business and its alliances with other companies. We were able to see companies, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, that were very successful in, uh, uh, in flow measurement, uh, in, in metering. And the question was, uh, should we join with them or should we develop our own product? And uh, the first one that I remember was uh, Meineke in Hanover, Germany. They were the largest producers of uh, turbo meters in the world. Badger Meter being a relatively smaller company in the marketplace has been able to leverage off of alliances with much larger companies where we've been able to bring products to the market that on our own we may not have been able to do. Milwaukee was one of the first large cities uh, to go to automatic meter reading. It's great. It's, it's a way to save money. It's being done in a way where there's no layoffs. All the position changes are being taken through uh, attrition. So it's, it's, it doesn't hurt the workers, and it provides a great savings to uh, our water users. The director of the, uh, the water department said, I want Badger's meter, and I want uh, ITRON's automatic meter reading unit. And so that was a big decision for us. Uh, did we want to sell just our own automatic meter reading or uh, are we willing to, to uh, put on someone else's technology? And uh, we made the decision, uh, we'll do whatever the customer wants. Leadership in engineering and technology have been hallmarks of Badger Meter since the days of the first frost-proof meter. In 1998, Badger Meter dedicated its new engineering facility, the James O. Wright Innovation Center. 
Recent new products and acquisitions include the Magnetoflow meter line, produced at a new plant in Brno in the Czech Republic. An automotive fluid dispensing system produced in Nancy, France. A line of impeller flow meters. And the Absolute Digital Encoder, which joins the Record All Transmitter Register as another option for digital connectivity. We have a very strong reputation in our markets, which is key. Badger is constantly innovating. We've recently come up with some very strong products, such as the Orion radio frequency product, such as an oil management system for the garages. Uh, products like that, that that are going to drive our future sales and the future growth of our company. <laughs> and to think, the frost-proof water meter was born right here in the Badger State. The 100-year milestone is a time to reflect on the company's many strengths. Wow, we've come a long way over the past 100 years. That first frost-proof water meter has grown into a company that today supplies flow measurement products to businesses and municipalities around the world. We're proud of our history, but we're also excited about the future. 100 years ago, no one would have guessed we'd be where we are today. And just imagine how far we'll go in the next 100 years. Oh, and those 10,000 meters our founders mentioned? Let's just say we've met that goal thousands of times. Mm -hmm.